I've been asked to tell you a special story about a godly lady named Miss Hannah Jean North. Miss Hannah Jean uh, came from Little River, Alabama. She was in education most of her life, and she loved the Lord, and she loved missions. I had known her all my life, but really didn't know her until I became uh, one of her deacons that was asked to visit with her as part of our elderly and shut-in ministry at First Baptist Church, Monroeville. It was there that Miss Hannah Jean and I really formed a bond. I would visit with her on Wednesday nights and update her with everything that was going on in the church. And then again on Sunday mornings, I would come and sit with her in her parlor as we would listen to the sermon on her radio. We did this for years and years, and we became very close. As time went on, she began to tell me that she wanted to do her giving while she's living so she's knowing where it's going and wanted me to help her. She had some special friends in her life that she wanted to give things to. And so that's what she began doing. And I helped her with that, and it was a special time for both of us. If she knew her, her days were drawing to an end, and she wanted to bless people with these uh, special gifts that she had. Later, as uh, she finished up on that project, one day she called me. And she said, Tommy, said, um, I want you to come over next Wednesday a little early. said, I've got something to give you. And I want to tell you now, it's the most precious thing that I own. It means more to me than anything I have ever owned in my life. And I want to give it to you. Could you come over next Wednesday? I said, yes, ma'am, you can count on me. I will be there. Well, of course, my flesh took over and I started thinking of all the possibilities. What could it be? Miss Hannah Jean was never married, but for some reason my mind thought of a diamond engagement ring. Maybe it was the first share of IBM stock way back in the early years that was worth all kind of money. Maybe it was a deed to the, to the farm or some kind of material thing. My mind was just playing tricks on me and I was consumed with what in the world could this be that was so special to Miss Anna Jean that it was worth more than anything in the world to her. What could it possibly be? Well, finally, Wednesday came. I thought it would never get there. So I could drive over and go up into the parlor where we would meet every Wednesday. And she sat me down and she said, said, I just want to tell you again before I go in the back and get this, what I'm about to give you is the most special thing in the world to me. It means more to me than all this other stuff I've given away. There is nothing more valuable to me in this world. She said, you sit here, and I'm going to go in the back and get it. Well, my heart was about to jump out of my chest. I was just heart beating fast and fast, and I was excited, wondering what in the world could this be? Well, I looked up after a few minutes, and here she comes, and she had her right hand raised and had it grasped like a fist, and she said, I've got it, I've got it. She had a little sparkle in her eye when she said it. And I knew whatever was in her right hand was something special. She came to me, still not opening the hand, and said, Now again, I want to tell you what this means to me. It's the most special thing I have ever owned in my life. And I want, to, want you to have it. Now open your hand. Well, I opened my hand, shaking. She opened hers, and she placed into my hand this rock a rock I looked at it and I said well um thank you there uh, Miss Anna Jean you know what I was thinking I was thinking it's a rock it's a dead gum rock I can't believe this she said now I know what you're thinking she's better hold on just a minute let me tell you about that rock. See, when I was a little girl going to Little River Baptist Church, I was born in 1911, and at the age of 12, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
it was winter and it was too cold for me to be baptized because we didn't have a baptistry. We would go down to the the creek, the little river creek there, and be baptized in the summer. So I had to wait till summer to be baptized. And when they took me down there and they lowered me under the water to wash away my sins, I reached down in the riverbed and I grabbed that rock right there in your hand this rock is what i grabbed and i've been holding on to it for 75 years as a symbol of the rock solid guarantee i have of eternal life in jesus christ it means more to me than you'll ever know well at this point tears were rolling down my face i'll look at this rock and I started to realize what kind of value she placed on her salvation. Nothing in this world, nothing this world had to offer was more valuable than her salvation. Nothing. And yet I took it for granted. And I looked at this rock all of a sudden, and it began to mean more to me that Jesus Christ himself had died for me. And she was right. What could be more important, what could be more valuable to any of us as believers than our salvation in Jesus Christ the rock? Well, as you can imagine, I treasure this rock more than anything now. And this rock sits framed above my desk, and all who ask will hear the story of the rock of Miss Anna Jean, for truly she honored God all her life. She was a woman of prayer. In fact, the First Baptist Church has a prayer room named in her honor. A godly woman who knew the rock. I'll never look at my salvation ever again with less than the value that it deserves. I hope you place the same value on your salvation.